Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at how we can improve the basic matplotlib figures that we can generate out of the box. So most of us have come across matplotlib in our Python journey at some point. And you'll know that when you're creating figures with matplotlib they can be very bland, boring. To get them into a usable state that is aesthetically pleasing can be quite troublesome and can take several lines of code and a lot of googling and looking around Stack Overflow. Although nowadays we've got ChatGPT which can help refine that process and help with our figures. But there are a number of libraries out there for matplotlib that allow us to change the aesthetics of our figure with simply one or two lines of code. And one of these libraries I'm going to be looking at today is the MPL Cyberpunk library. So cyberpunk is a very common subgenre of science fiction and it's characterized by its portrayal of dystopian futuristic cities and these futuristic cities are often depicted with bright neon lights that are very colorful and make everything stand out. And what we're going to do is apply some of that styling from the MPL cyberpunk and from the cyberpunk genre to our matplotlib figures. And we're doing this with two lines of code, an import statement and also a with statement where we can apply the styling. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can take our basic matplotlib figures from something like this to something like this. And the first thing we generally do is import the libraries that we're going to be using within our notebook. So for this one, we're going to be importing matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, pandas as PD, and numpy as np. And you'll see that we've got an additional library here called MPL Cyberpunk. And this is a library that we're going to use to transform our matplot figures. Now, if you don't already have this installed, you can easily install it through Jupyter Notebook by typing in an exclamation mark and typing in pip install MPL Cyberpunk. And then that will install it into your Python environment. And this saves you having to go back to the terminal or command prompt and trying to type that in separately. So we'll import these libraries and I'm going to be working with some dummy data here. And basically it's just four categories, A, B, C and D. And each of these categories will have some values. And we've got three columns of values and these are just random integers. So when you're running this code from my notebook on, on GitHub, you might find that you've got slightly different results. Don't worry, that's part of the randomness with randint. So if we run that, we then get back our data frame and we can see that we've got our four categories and three different columns here with our different values. So the first chart we're going to look at is a very basic bar chart. And we can create bar charts directly from pandas by calling upon the plot method. So we take our data frame and then call upon dot plot and then we pass in what column we want or what we want on the x-axis and the type of bar chart that we're wanting. If we run that, we get back the basic standard matplotlib bar chart. We can see it uses the standard colors. It's not very interesting. And um, we can spice that up very simply with MPL Cyberpunk. So if I copy this entire line again, and if we go to the start of it, what we need to do is add in one additional line. So if I say with plt.style, um, dot context and then pass in cyber punk and put a colon at the end and then indent the, the plot line then that's all we need to do and if we run that we instantly get back the same figure but with different styling so we can see that some of the axes have gone and we can see that it's applied the color palette from MPL cyberpunk so we've got these blues pinks and yellows so not very interesting, but nice to keep a consistent style with the rest of your plots, which we'll see when we come to subplots. Next, we're going to look at a line chart, and this is where we can showcase some of the MPL cyberpunk uh, features that just make it a little bit more cyberpunky. So we basically do the same as what we've done before, df.plot, and we pass in our x-axis, which is going to be our category, and we're going to pass in the, the kind as a line. So this will generate our line plot. So I've got some additional arguments here, such as the line width, the marker type, and the marker size, and also the figure size. So when we run that, again, we get back a standard matplotlib figure. So not very inspiring and uh, yeah, very bland, straight out of the box, but it's still a usable figure. So if we want to turn this into a cyberpunk figure, again, all we do is take the code that we've got before, we type in with plt.style.context 
and then pass in cyber punk then indent the, the next line down and we can then run that and we generate our line plot so it's already looking much better it's a nice dark theme if you prefer the dark mode uh, these days which uh, a lot of people do it's much easier on the eyes and it generates this nice nice figure so there are a few other things that we can do to this just to make it uh, stand out a little bit and one of the ways that we can do that is by making the lines glow and we just call one MPL cyberpunk and then we call upon dot make lines glow and that's all we need to do so we just add another line of code in run that and now we get back some glowing lines which are very reminiscent of um, some of the futuristic movies we've all seen where we've got bright neon lights in the background quite a dark atmosphere so this sort of ties in with that cyberpunk theme as well as making the lines glow, we can add some transparent fills to these lines. And we do that again by adding an extra line of code here. So I'll remove the line that we've had before and we call upon MPL Cyberpunk. So we'll add a gradient fill and we need to set the alpha gradient glow and we can set this to any value. So if I set it to 0 0.4, it's a sort of a 40% transparent. And we can run that and now we get our plot and we've got these gradient fills to our line plot, which just makes it stand out a little bit more. So that's uh, already transforming this very bland figure into something that is uh, a little bit different and unique. In addition to applying the cyberpunk style to a map plot lib basic figure, we can apply them to more complex figures, including radar charts like the one I've got here. So what we're doing here is we're importing a patch from the patches module within Matplotlib. And then we're setting up some data, some lists here so that we can close the loop on the radar chart so that we've got a complete continuous line around, around the chart. Then we're setting up some labels and then we move on to setting up the figure. So we've got uh, separate axes here. So we've got an axis for our plot and then for filling in our line. So I've done this slightly different by applying the two on top of each other and just uh, I just found that was an easier way. Uh, and then we basically convert the lines and our labels onto a polar grid. So when we run this, we get back the basic radar chart and we've got our individual categories around the, the axis here, around the edge, A, B, C, and D. And we've also got our different values. So these values look slightly different to what we've got before. Uh, and that's simply because I've uh, had to refresh this and uh, the randomness of the randint is generating new values. So they're slightly different to what you've seen before. We can take that whole chart and we can cyberpunk it. And it's very simple to do. Again, it's just basically one line of code to be able to do this. And what we need to do is take out some of the setup here. So we don't really need that. It's already been done. We don't need to import again. Obviously we've already done it. And then we just call on with plt.style. Uh, dot context and we just basically cyberpunk it that's all we need to do very simple and if I uh, indent all of that and we can run that and we get back the following figure so it looks a little bit dull here with the the background with the grid and that's just the nature of the theme but you can change that and change some of the line stylings just to make it clearer and we can also add glows in here as well. So it's again a case of MPL cyberpunk dot glow effects. And we just run that. And now we've got our lines glowing. So it just makes it a little bit more standout-ish. So moving on to something that's a little bit more complex. When creating figures with matplotlib, we often want to show multiple plots. And the types of plots can vary depending on what you're wanting to show in the overall figure. So this example here is basically showing how to create a matplotlib figure with four subplots, two line plots, a scatter plot, and a bar chart. Basically, when we run this, we get back the following plot. So already it looks interesting. We've got our subplots, plot one, two, three, and four, all showing different types of data, which is fine. And this might be usable. We just need to tweak some of the axes and add some labels uh, onto here and add some legends just to make it a little bit more descriptive. But we can take that same code and as before, we just need to add that line with plt style.context and then set it to cyberpunk. And we indent all of that. And when we run it, we now get back the following cyberpunk figure. 
So cyberpunk is great for creating these interesting visualizations, but it's not something that you would really show within a presentation or in a professional setting, is it? It's just a little bit too uh, creative. So sometimes keeping it simple and keeping it basic is probably more impactful within a professional setting. But it's great to explore these different styles, especially if you're creating interesting infographics. So I'll leave the next video just up here if you want to see how to use Python for data visualization. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click on that thumbs up button down below and click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. That way, YouTube will notify you when new uploads are added to the channel. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.